It's Maida from Pink Pills and Paper and today I'm coming to you with my May wrap up and it's been a month of graphic novels let me tell you but first I'm gonna start with the novels that I read um, I read one two three four five six novels only but in total I read 22 books there were five novels one collection of uh, letters, five collections of poetry, and and eleven graphic novels or manga. So let's start with the wrap up. First off, I read As Cocadas, which is a Brazilian book by Cora Coralina. Um, it's a children's book with illustrations. It was um, a pretty easy. Um, fast read. I gave this four stars. Then I read Devil's Cup by Georgette Hare. Um, I actually really really love this one. Um, it's a historical novel and I think if you're a fan of Jane Austen and you've run out of Jane Austen books, pick up Georg Georgette Hare. Um, she'll like fill that addiction in you again but this one had like, I have to say, a really toxic relationship, but I devoured it. It was really, really good. Um, it was twists and turns throughout the whole book. Um, the romance was lovely, toxic a little bit, but lovely. And I gave this 4.5 stars. Then I reread um, Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Maas. For my Throne of Glass reread, this is the fifth volume on the Throne of Glass series. I am now going to read Empire, uh, no, Kingdom of Ash, which is this, the last one. I'm gonna skip the sixth because I remember it pretty well. So I'm finally gonna finish the series. Um, Throne of Glass is about uh, an assassin who goes through a competition to be the Emperor's new assassin in like royal assassin and it goes from there. I read Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. It's another competition, but this time to be the Emperor's tailor. But Maya is the girl and only men are allowed, so she disguises herself as a boy like Mulan and enters the competition. So it's like um a uh, mixture of Mulan and Project Runway. She goes to the competition, but the competition is just the first part of the book. This has like a lot of layers and I really enjoyed reading it. It wasn't a favorite of mine, but I, I gave it 3.5 stars. Um, I am going to be reading the second one. It's a duology and it got me hooked in the point that I want to know what happens next but I gave it 3.5 stars. Next one was Impulse by Ellen Hopkins. This is a novel written in verse. It's just simply amazing. I gave this five stars. Um, I think the cover is so ugly and <laughs> if it had a beautiful, a more beautiful cover I mean it deserves it deserves a beautiful cover because this book is so good it's about three young people who try to commit suicide in different ways and they all um, end up in this rehab facility and it's pretty much their day-to-day -day in their in that rehab facility and in their rehabilitation 
and um, they're demons. They're. I I just think it was so well done. It uh, the verse was beautiful and um, I don't know what else to say. This it's a, I think it's a book everyone should read. It's for the representation. I think it was really well done. Uh, for the representation of mental health issues, I gave this five out of five stars. So I I also read um, Letters to a Young Poet by Rainer Maria Rilke, which is a compilation of letters that he wrote to a young poet um, that was asking for advice on his poems and life in general, and Rilke. Um, does just that. He he advises him on his life and his sorrows and solitude and um, a bunch of other things. It's a really good um, book. I was recommended this one by Emma from Emmy, um, her channel Emmy, and she like loves this book to death. And <laughs> I read it because of her. I gave this 3.5 stars. So now we go to the poetry. I read The Book of Hours by Rilke, uh, which are love letters, to love poems to God. Um, it When I bought it and I saw there was love letters to God, I was kind of app apprehensive because I didn't know Rilke was so religious. But his religion in this book at least it is something I really, really related to, and um, it's just beautiful. Rilke's work never ceases to amaze me. Um, I think the way he writes about God is really relatable, and I think anyone, even if someone who doesn't believe in God, would devour this and really like it. I gave this 4.5 stars. Then we come to Devotions by Mary Oliver. Um, this is a compilation of her uh, poems also. This one I wasn't as much as a fan of, mainly because um, I enjoy poetry about introspection and about the self. And uh, Mary Oliver focuses a lot on nature and um, the birds and the trees and the brooks and her walks in nature and things like that. And um, I, it's simply the fact that I don't relate much to that since I live in a big city, a capital, and I, I'm not much in contact with nature as I would like to be. I don't think I related much to her work and I gave this 3.5 stars because the poems were stellar. Um, she has a great um, talent and it's just that the subjects didn't really interest me much but Again, 3.5 stars. Mary Oliver Devotion. I read Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. Kaur, Kaur. Um, it was so disappointing. I don't think that's poetry. It's like me. It's like I'm saying things, but then I'm cutting the phrases down and putting them in verse style it didn't seem like poetry to me at least but there were some um, few ones that I liked so I gave this one 2.5 stars then I read The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kaur and I DNF'd at 30% and I gave it one star it was just what was that? No. Just no. 
I also read The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace and that one was even worse. I gave it one star. Um, I think Goodreads should have the, the choice to give us the choice to give less than one star because sometimes I feel that way but this one got one star for me. It's the same thing with Rupi Kaur. Amanda Lovelace just cuts down the, the phrases to form verses it, and it, it doesn't sound like poetry. It doesn't look like poetry. I mean, it looks like poetry, but it doesn't sound and it doesn't read like poetry. Um, and it was very surface level. It, 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 I didn't feel anything reading it. So... I gave that one star. Now we come to the graphic novels. Um, I read Book Love by Debbie Tung. It's just a bunch of comics about how much she loves books. It's not like a narrative, it's just a bunch of comics and it's really funny and relatable to anyone who loves books and who um, buys and collects books like I do so this was really really relatable um, I gave this I don't remember five four stars I gave this four stars then I read Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg which is um, a, no a graphic novel about the brothers Bronte, um, Branwell, Charlotte Bronte, Emily Bronte, and Anne Bronte, and their imaginings when they were uh, when they were children. So this book kind of mixes their day-to-day -day life as they they were children and adolescents with the day-to-day -day life in real life and their uh, other, their other words that they created in their minds and they wrote about and and followed the 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 characters and their stories and it's really well told. Um, it was really captivating and um, I don't know. I love Jane Eyre. It's my favorite book. It's written by one of the brothers. One a sister, uh, Charlotte Bronte, and I just really love this book, um, this graphic novel, it's top notch, I give it five, 5 out of 5 stars. Next I read Anya's Ghost um, by Vera Brosgo and um, it's about a girl who falls into a well and in that well she finds a ghost of a girl about her age and the ghost starts following her everywhere and things are not what they seem about this ghost of this little dead girl and I give this book 3.5 stars after that I read In Real Life by Cora Doctoro and Jen Wang. I read it mostly because I really love the um, art style of Jen Wang and it's about video games, um, especially the fact that there is real life in video games. There are people who are playing those those games. Uh, so if if you're playing a game there are people, real people, who are also playing the game, who are being affected in a way. And it's about, um, uh, I think, Chinese, Chinese young men who are paid to play in this game, to earn money and uh, sell like stuff for the game. It's something I really am not used to because I'm not a gamer, but 
um, I think it was really well told. I really liked it. I gave it three stars. No, I gave it four stars. Then I read uh, My Brother's Husband, Volume 1, and My Brother's Husband, Volume 2. Um, they're mangas and they're really cute and sweet and I think the representation was fine I think for Japan which is a country where um, queerness is not something already normalized um, it was okay I, I thought it was like really surface level with the representation but I get it that it was written for Japanese um, consumption by a Japanese I think it was by a Japanese person it's by Gengoro Tagame and I gave four stars to both of those mangas then I read Nimona by Noelle Stevenson and um, I think that one was kind of all over the place it's about a girl who can transform into anything she wants she can be a shark she can be a dragon she can be whatever she wants and um, she can change forms uh, and all she wants is to be the sidekick to the villain of the story but the villain in the story is not the villain it's like kind of a doctor horrible thing where the villain is not really a villain he's just misunderstood and um this villain kind of sees something in Nimona that is not completely um what he thought she was and I can't say anything else because it would be a spoiler but I gave this one three stars then I went on a binge and I read Heartstopper volumes 2, 3 and 4 they were amazing they're about two kids um, in high school who fall in love one of them is openly gay and the other one is still trying to come to terms with his sexuality he thinks he's bi um, and uh, it's sweet it's like the sweetest thing you will ever read um, I gave four stars to the, t the l volume 2 and volume 3 and I gave 4.5 no I gave 5 stars I think I gave 5 stars yeah I gave 5 stars to the volume 4 it was by far the best one it dealt more with serious stuff like eating disorders and depression and I think it elevated the the story a bit then I read Sheets by Brenna Thumbler um, it's a kind of a sad graphic novel about a girl called Marjorie who um, her mom has died and her father is like in a stupor he doesn't do anything anymore so she's now left to run their laundry shop alone and she is in high school and she has to deal with both of those things alone and still take care of her little brother and then there comes this um ghost i think his name is wendell and sh all things a lot of things happen between marjorie and this ghost wendell um i think it's wendell a lot of hijinks and um i think i gave it three stars and that said those were my 22 books that i read in may and i hope you like this video please share like subscribe and i hope to see you soon have a great day an awesome week and i'll see you soon